So I've spent time creating a WordPress.com site, or I might have a WordPress.org site, and it's time to get up and, and start writing. I will have a checklist for you next time that we will look at together and get into details. But before we start to try to write, um, let's talk in, in general about brainstorming ideas and general concepts to get you thinking about what to write next time when we come back. So I'm going to make some notes here. This is not all-inclusive, but I'm going to say ideas for articles, ideas for blog posts. Um, we have lists, we have how-tos, and we have what is, what is. These are three possible ideas out of many, many, many ideas. Let me get specific. Lists. You could write top 10 travel destinations. This might apply for a realty company, uh, or more obviously, a travel agency. Let's say there's a travel agency company. There's a travel agency. I want customers to book these amazing trips. People don't know that we offer these trips. We will write articles such as top 10 travel destinations, top 5 European getaways, top 12 retirement locations. Just a list of things. Let's say I'm that baker, Victor's Bakery. I could write something like the 7 best cookies. This is a bakery. A list of something. Top 10, top 7, top 3, top 90, doesn't matter. Just a collection of things. This kind of article, as we'll see later, is very cool because it's got small chunks of information that people can read. Maybe someone, when they see top 10, just jump right away to number 1. That's fine. Go ahead and read number 1, and it's going to be so great, they'll go back to read number 2 and 3 and 10, whatever. Maybe someone will start at 10 and go back down to 1. Maybe they'll jump around and look at different things. Maybe it'll be so interesting, then they click that Tweet button to share it to their family, and I get more free advertising for my article. So lists of anything. Let's say I'm a web design company. You tell me. If I'm a web design company, what's a list of things that you might be interested in? What's that? What the website? What? Yes, but how can we possibly think of an article related to web design? So I'll say something like the best, or let's say the opposite, the worst way to build a website. So I'm a web design company. I want to get hired to do web design. I'm going to give away a free article like this. This is the thing about all of this blogging. You have a company, some sort of brand or business and such. Think about what can you give away on your articles. Don't, of course, give away your trade secrets. Like on that um, seven best cookies. What if I'm doing a top three recipes? I'm going to write these recipes for my bakery, but I'm not going to give away the secret ingredient to my, to my, to my cookies. So the worst way to build a website. The worst ways to build a website. A list of things. HubSpot did um, what people hate about your website. Oh, okay. Ten things people hate <laughs> about your website. That's good there. Ten things people hate about your website. Let's say we go over to the how-tos. This one, pretty self-explanatory. How to install WordPress. How to get a good loan rate. How to monetize. How to monetize your site. And one thing that I notice a lot be very careful about this. This is just a personal pet peeve. I want to tell you here, just because this is how does not mean it's a question. 
So don't put question marks on these. are not questions. How to monetize a site? These are not questions. This is telling you how to monetize. This is a very common thing. Grammar is not everyone's best friend. And this is something here. This is not a question. Don't put a question there. You will look unprofessional. If you say, why would I monetize your site? Perhaps that's a question. How doesn't always equal a question. How do I monetize my site? That's a question. Uh, you don't have to call it how to. You could say um, tutorial on setting up your computer. That's going to be a how to. It doesn't have to literally say the words how to. Because we still have to think about what are people going to search for? How to set up my computer. Um, you know, the grandparents' guide to installing Instagram. That's going to be also a, a, a how to, a tutorial. Yeah, so all of these ideas on whatever business you have, web design company, realty company, all of these kinds of ideas. Let's look at what is. This is much more of an explanatory type of, of, a, of article that explains something. It could meld in with how to and a list. So a couple of real examples from some of these clients. One of them is, uh, what is La Coche? La Coche is one of the foods that one of those clients, one of our clients, um, uh, serves. It's a, it's a traditional Mexican delicacy. This is explaining what that is. If you read that article on the site, um, if you just search that, the client will show up. But that is explaining what the food is, and in the article, it's got then links. Go buy it right now. Uh, or read this other article. So when we write our articles, and I give you the checklist, there'll be all of these other tips on how you should write things. But these are ideas of giving us concepts of what to write. So if I were a realtor, what is something that someone might have a question about realty? What is a um, variable loan rate? So I'm a realtor. I want to get someone into a brand new house. Um, someone has heard, has heard about variable loan rate. Or maybe more cryptically, what is a 5-5 five -five arm? these sorts of things. Then you've got an article that explains it. The purpose of that is someone is searching that. What is an arm? 5-5 five, five arm. Uh, and they might find your site. Because within the article that we will write about that later, you'll have many more of these details and keywords and phrases that people might be searching for to find you, to see that you know what you're talking about, and then they will call you or hire you. Is there a way to find out uh, the popularity of certain Tag words, search words. Yeah, definitely. You can use um, Google AdWords. It's going to want to guide you to create a Google Ad account to purchase them and such, but you can still use it without purchasing anything. Look up Google AdWords, and in there you can do research about what are popular words, what are not popular words. And when we'll talk about it later, you might not want to go for the most popular words because everyone's using those words, and therefore you're going to be a needle in a haystack. So we'll go into that detail later. But Google AdWords, uh, and then just simply doing, you know, a Bing search. Just go to Bing and search, and start typing a keyword, and it'll start to suggest you keywords that might be valuable. So these ideas here are just sort of quick generic brainstorming ideas in the time that we have. If you'd like to, for us to help you individually, I'll take a volunteer, tell me what your company is. I'll write it here. We'll all think about a couple of articles, perhaps. You'll have some ideas. Anyone would like to share what their business is, what to write about? No? Okay, class is over. Let's go. <laughs> Entertainment venues? Event center. Event center. So it's an actual like uh, location where people would go to yeah, yeah, have events. Event. Yeah. Okay. So this is an event center and uh, articles. 
blog post questions, uh, what, we, what we might be searching for, uh, what are the best times of the year to book a get-together. Um, do I really want to have that party in December or January? Why? Write a few paragraphs on that, show some pictures, show maybe why it's more cost-effective, it's an off-peak hour. People want to put their party in December because Christmas time. But if you do it in January when the hubbub is over, it might be $20 cheaper. I don't know. Anyone have any opinions? What would you be interested in reading about in an event center blog? Um, let's say the event center has an area where you can do outdoor sports. How to set up a volleyball net. So think outside the box because as we'll see later, you're going to write articles, you're going to write blogs, and it's not that you're going to write one and you're done. You're not going to write seven and you're done. You're going to write them on a regular basis. We'll talk about regular basis, what that means later, and length and all of that. But assume you're going to write one article once a month. So what are you going to be able to write about on the long term? This one is very specific, but... Okay, great. So what's what's on the schedule for June? What sort of events and things are scheduled for that month? That's something that could easily be written every month. You write a couple of paragraphs on this act coming in, or this event, or the chili cook-off, or whatever. Whatever is happening on a regular basis, you write a little bit about it, and that's the content that then will help you get found, because I'm going to look up you know, the Bonita Chili Fest is coming, but I'm going to type in here other chili fests, and I find out there's another one coming up in, in a few months. I can't get enough chili. So if you write different articles like that to help you get found, that's the whole point of blogging. There's a couple ones here to think about. Uh, let's say, uh, here's one perhaps. Um, how would we call this? Um, this is the... Um, employee spotlight. Every month or so you write a short article about the people that work there, the people that make the event center great. Who is the groundskeeper? Who is the marketer? Who is the web designer? Who is the founder? That's putting out again this content. What exactly to write there is a little harder to explain in the time that we have, uh, but this is just thinking about things that I could write, and this of course can also apply to any kind of business. If I got Victor's Bakery, I can do this employee spotlight. I'm going to do this baker this month, I'm going to do this employee next month, next month I've got another employee, I've got content to put out there. I'm going to weave into the article things like click here to buy this, or don't forget to subscribe, or read this other article. Let's move on then. Um, anyone else, perhaps? What's your business or company or whatever about? And maybe we'll brainstorm a little bit. Okay. We can talk one on one during the break and such as well. But the point of this is we need to think about what are we going to write on a regular basis. Once a month is our goal. We could write once every other month. Um, we can write more than that, uh, but it's that we're writing something so that the search engines find, so that they rank you higher than your competitor that has a better looking site but hasn't updated it. Maybe your site doesn't look as good, but it's your content that is going to get you more traffic. Specifically? So household items. Um, so here I can definitely think of a lot of lists, top five cleaning products. The best organic um, dinner ingredients. 
how to fix your doorbell. So lists, how to's, what is articles, that sort of thing. Let me show you an example here. I'm not affiliated with this site, but uh, I like to look at it as examples. Investorjunkie.com. This website is about getting hired to be your financial planner, to be an investor, a good investor for retirement and all of that. So, um, you know, they're selling a financial service. But then they've got under uh, educate, they've got articles investing secrets under articles I can look at all of these different topics taxes economics etc so I'm looking at a particular section let's say under just investing 10 criteria to consider when choosing the right broker 10 financial milestones to achieve in your 20s and 30s 2016 dividend aristocrat list so Here's a couple of list articles. Here's a what is article, another list one. This is mostly lists, but these are very good because it's short bits of knowledge. I want to see what are these milestones that I should achieve or should have achieved. And so this is a few hundred words, but notice it's chunks of information. I can quickly see a section. Maybe I'm not going to read in detail. I can get the gist of, of, it, of it, such as landing your first career type position, opening a checking account, starting and regularly funding an emergency fund. I can get the gist of it just by the by the number in the top 10 list. And then if I really want to go in, start a retirement plan, I'm only 22. That's going to be 90 years from now. Now everyone should think about retirement at all times. And so here, uh, I read that and notice they slipped in here a couple of links to other of their articles, how to get started compounding interest and why it's so good. So you, we'll, we'll do this together next time. But we're going to write these things and we're going to interconnect them with more articles to keep people on our site. Because eventually, as I read more of these, I might subscribe, I might take advantage of that promotion and they get a cut of that promotion. I may hire them to manage all of this because it's complicated. So I'll hire them. So the longer someone's on your site, the more possibility they will accomplish what you need them to. And on the side, it tells me, what about this one? What about that one? How to invest your first thousand dollars. They did just get that birthday present from grandma, so maybe I should invest that one thousand dollars. And I'm often reading another article, and another one, and another one, and I'm getting something out of it. This one's a, another one into sections, and click here to do this, and click here to do that. So they're, they not only are giving away a lot of free stuff, they have click here to get the best IRA promotions, and they get they get a cut out of that. So Investor Junkie, I like it. Even if you haven't thought about money and such, uh, I would check them out for the way they write their articles. They're very good articles. I have no stake in this company, but I do want to show you in the way that they write articles, and also for philanthropy, I would like you to educate yourself a bit on finances. It's not as hard as you think. Especially if you're near retirement or far from retirement, this is stuff that you should think about. We're going to wrap up with any general questions of anything we talked about today. Can you go on Tumblr? Do you get a link when you create a Tumblr account? Yeah, it's also going to do something like victorsbakery.tumblr.com. Okay. And can you actually um, have ads on your Tumblr account? Hmm, maybe not on Tumblr. I think Tumblr will put ads for you, but you have no control of that or you get no you get no revenue out of that, to my knowledge. All right, so for the moment we'll wrap up. I'll put all of the notes that I wrote into the network folder. Let me remind you where that's at, because again, I'm going to give you things throughout the course, like my notes. If you want my notes, you want to minimize everything and we'll go to the desktop so that you open the computer window. You will see the network location. 
classroom data drive Z as in zebra. Double click classroom data Z. Scroll down to find our class, which is campus blogging. Double click that. And I've got the syllabus and my notes. Drag those over to your flash drive or email them to yourself. I'll turn on the printer in a moment so you can print them if you'd like. And that'll be it for today. When we come back next time, we've got ideas, we've got a blog, WordPress. We'll actually start writing. I'll give you a checklist that we'll get hands-on with that. So see you next time.